Hey there, Synthetic Programming here with another video for you guys today, and today we're going to do an interesting one. You know I like to program in Python, but today we are going to program some Python with an actual Python. This is Lemos, my largest ball Python. Uh, Lemos is an unknown age and came to me underweight, uh, kind of abused, but uh, quickly we got who we think is a girl, so she, we got her up to... Uh, up to a healthy weight, now she's a thick lady, and she's uh, really sweet, except for the one time that she bit me profusely. So, uh, yeah, I think today we're going to try programming a simple Python program while holding a Python and see how easy that actually ends up being. Uh, for our selected project, we are going to make a simple word counter that searches through a text file and then prints out how many times a word appears uh, that the user searches for. And we're going to see how easy it is to do that uh, while also wrangling this explorative little python. So without further ado, let's get started and see how easy that this is. So we uh, are here ready with our file counter.py. Um, counter.py is going to be where we write all the code for this project. She's already starting to uh, explore and try to get off of my hand. But we're going to have to hold her and program one-handed then. So to begin, we are going to. Oh Jesus! Uh, so to begin, we are going to start off by importing the uh, text information. We're going to do that by saying, with open uh, Moby Dick dot txt. Now, if you don't see that Moby Dick dot text is the entire book Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I have that uh, in the same directory as this file. You're going to need it to be in the same directory for this to work. So with open Moby Dick dot txt, here you can sit on my neck. Uh, with open Moby Dick dot text in read mode like this, uh, we are going to say that the text information, so we'll call it text, equals f dot read. That's only going to work if I say as f. There we go. So text equals f.read, and then we can say f.close just to clean it up a little bit. So now we can actually write our function. Our function is going to be down here. What we're going to do is define a new function called word count. And word count is going to take in a parameter word which is the word that the user is searching for, like that. And now we are going to actually write the bulk of our code. So count, which is gonna be the amount of times that we see the word in the document, count is gonna be equal to zero at the beginning. Now we have to loop through the text document and look for that word. And how we do that is, uh, I don't know, kinda elegant, we'll see. We're gonna say for i, in the range, so we're looking for a range of numbers uh, of zero to the length of uh, the document, which is text. We've loaded that in as text. Uh, and now, because it's from zero, we can actually get rid of that. Uh, range only needs to see the last thing um, if it starts at zero, because then it auto starts at zero. But for I, in range length text, we are going to also subtract the length from this of the word that we're using. And the reason for that is because we don't want to scan through all the way to the end. We're going to get an index error if we do that, because we can only scan if we're looking for something of the size of word from zero until the part of the document where the only amount of letters left is the same amount of letters in that word. So next what we do is we say that our window of search like this is equal to, oh, what's she doing? I'll try to pull her back. There we go. So window is equal to text and then from I until um, I plus the length of word. She's just going everywhere right now. She does not want to stay still. 
see if I can wrap her up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we have our window. And now we're gonna say if uh, our window dot lower like that equals please don't bite my hand <laughs> if window dot lower equals our word dot lower like that we are going to say correctly with our colon up here we're going to say count like that plus equals one so we add one to the count. So now we're actually pretty much done except for what we actually print out for the user. So now we're gonna say that if, when the loop is done, count is equal to zero, we're gonna say print, and we're going to say the word, we're gonna add the string word to this. So it says the word we can even put like a double quotes here. So we'll say word. So the word and then the word uh, appears in the text. Uh, sorry, does not appear in the text. Perfect. So now we can say else. So if the count is above zero, if the count is zero, we didn't see the word at all. If the count is above zero, then you saw the word some amount of time. So we're gonna say else print. We're gonna copy this part of the string, just like so. So we're gonna say that. The word word like this appears in the text and we're going to add the string version of the int count like that. Perfect. And then we're going to add many, oh sorry, times, just times. Like that, perfect. And we're done. So now we can actually run the code. Limos did not make that particularly easy for me at the beginning, but now she's chilled out and she's staying still. So let's try it out. So we're going to bring up the output here. We're going to scroll up a bit just so I can get this all in the frame nice and centered. So we're gonna say do word count of the word Moby because we're reading the book Moby Dick. So hopefully Moby appears in there some amount of times. If we play that, we can see that the word Moby appears in the text 84 times. Uh, that's surprisingly low for what you imagine it would appear in the book called Moby Dick, but let's try the word the, spelled correctly. And we get that the word the appears in the text 19,400 and 59 times, that's a lot of words. And uh, just to test our other uh, thing, now if we say Donald Trump, that should not appear in Moby Dick uh, at all because uh, Herman Melville was a good writer. And so let's hit that. And it says the word Donald Trump does not appear in the text, which is good for the text and good for all of us. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that was a successful write of a simple function in Python while holding an actual Python. Uh, Lemos behaved pretty well, uh, not at the beginning. At the beginning she was exploring everywhere and going around, but now she's chilled out and she's just, uh, just exploring a little bit. Ball pythons are very docile. They're definitely uh, probably the nicest type of snake that you can own. I own three of them. Uh, I have three other snakes as well that are corn snakes, uh, but Lemos is my biggest snake by far, and uh, yeah, a ball python with python. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted, but we just passed 8,000 subscribers, so definitely don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. 
I'll probably bring more pythons like Lemos into the following videos while I'm stuck inside. And uh, if you guys enjoy that, let me know in the comments down below, for sure. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, everybody.